Hey, a friend, Chris here from whitelogicperules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to video number three, part three in our, what I think will be a 10 part series now, all about getting into Atmos and Logic Pro. And the reason I say this is because as I'm filming videos, I'm realizing there are some extra details along the way, like today's video that I wanna cover for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get set up for speaker playback of Atmos tracks from Apple Music or from Apple TV, because a lot of Apple TV shows now support Atmos. There's been a number of questions since last week's video, which part two, we did a listening session of listening to Atmos Music from Apple Music on speakers, and I reacted. And folks had questions like, hey, Chris, what the heck? Uh, this doesn't work on my system. I only get 5.1 playback. So I want to show you how I got set up for Atmos playback on the speaker setup of 7.0.4. While technically, according to the system, it was a 7.1.4 setup. Nonetheless, I want to show you how to get set up with this for Apple Music and Apple TV. But before I do, I do have to point out that this series is sponsored by IK Multimedia, the company who was so supportive and so kind as to loan me their iLoud Immersive MTM bundle of speakers so I could conduct this series. So again, the iLoud Immersive MTM bundle is exactly that. It's a bundle of 11 of the very popular iLoud MTM speakers. You can see them right behind me. And they're awesome for a number of reasons. One, they have tremendous sound. They sound fantastic. Number two, they're easy to mount just about anywhere thanks to the threading underneath the speaker and they're light and they're small. So you can mount them onto a microphone stand, which I've done for all of the speakers in this room, including the height channels. And also you can tune each of the speakers to your space using the built-in ARC technology and the included MEMS microphone, which is actually right here behind me as well, which we'll use later on. So I'll include a link in the description below as well as in this video if you wanna learn more about the iLoud Immersive MTM bundle. But for now, let's just get right into it. All right, getting Atmos to play back from Apple Music and Apple TV on your speaker setup if you have one with your audio interface. This is possible, at least according to my tests. I've been able to achieve this, though there were some hiccups once I got everything set up. I'll explain that later on. But what I wanna point out first is that your Mac has to have the capability of playing back Atmos and spatial audio. With that out of the way, the next step I believe is that you need to be running Mac OS Monterey. So if you have those two down, the third caveat is that you have to be in a country or territory that Atmos and Apple Music and all these services are supported in. So I'm gonna open up Safari on my Mac. And just to show you that right around here, we have a note that says, hey, Dolby Atmos, isn't available in the Apple Music Voice plan. And Apple Music, Apple Music Voice, and Dolby Atmos aren't available in all countries or regions. So see this Apple support document about the availability of Apple media services in different countries and territories. I'll include a link to this support document on Apple's website in the description below so you can check it out for your own territory or country. So the first step is to go to the audio MIDI setup utility. And to navigate to that, I'm going to go right down to the dock and I'm going to open the finder on my system. And in the applications folder, we're gonna go basically to the bottom of the applications, to the utility folder, and we're going to open the audio MIDI setup window. So I'll just double click. And on the left-hand side, you have a list of every single audio device, whether it's actual hardware connected to your Mac or a software device such as loopback from Rogue Amoeba, or in my case, Ginger Audio's Ground Control Sphere application. And you would select your audio interface or software device that you want to configure to play back in Atmos. Again, in my case, this will be the Ginger Audio Sphere application. So I've selected this 16 input and output device, and we'll go right to the bottom right-hand corner of the audio MIDI setup window to configure the speakers for this device. All right, so you can see I've already configured this for a 7.1.4 Atmos surround setup, but likely your system will be set up instead to perhaps stereo. And if we change the view from isometric here to top or to the side, you can see how many speakers you have set up for your audio device. And the configuration can be set anywhere between stereo up to 9.1.6 Atmos surround. So you could choose either stereo or a surround configuration or an Atmos configuration. And I'm going to be working with, again, a 7.1.4 Atmos surround setup. 
but you can also see at the bottom of the configuration window, other options for quadraphonic, hexagonal, and octagonal. Cool. Once you select the configuration you want to use for Atmos playback, you should then probably direct your attention to the bottom portion of the audio MIDI setup window, which tells you which speaker is being sent to which channel of your audio interface or software device. Obviously, we have speakers for each the left and the right, the surrounds, the center, the subwoofer, rear surrounds, as well as the top, front, and rear. And you can see that the audio being sent to the left speaker will come from channel number one of the Sphere application. And so we have 12 speakers in this array, so we'll be using channels one through 12. You can reconfigure which channel sends to which speaker just by clicking on each drop-down menu under the channel section. And we can say, no, I want actually the left speaker to accept the signal from maybe channel number 16. And you could reconfigure as you see fit. Once you've configured your channels to the appropriate speakers, you can then send a test signal to each of those speakers to ensure, yes, the left speaker is the left speaker in my room. The right speaker, according to the audio MIDI setup window, is the right speaker in my room again, so on and so forth. And that's why I have the MEMS microphone set up so you can hear this white noise test tone through one of the speakers. Here we go. All right, so that was the left channel. Once you've gone through and tested each speaker to ensure that the correct channel is sending to the correct speaker, you can then just go right down to the bottom and click apply. And from there, this configuration will be applied for your audio device, for your Mac system, in the audio MIDI setup utility. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and done this, so I'm just going to hit done instead of apply. So no, I don't intend to apply any changes to my audio device, just on the off chance that I did make a change and I'm not aware of it at this moment. And again, this can be applied both to software devices as well as hardware. So if we go to my Symphony IO Thunderbolt device, which is what the Sphere application will be outputting to, we can go right down to configure speakers, and you can see that I've configured my Symphony IO Mark II, again, for a 7.1.4 Atmos surround setup. And playback channels 1 through 12 are being sent to each of these speakers in the setup. All right, cool. So at this point, let's go to Apple Music. And the next step is to go up to the taskbar at the top, click on Music, and go down to Settings. And under the playback settings, about three quarters of the way down, we have an option for Dolby Atmos. And we have three options that we can flip between. We have automatic, which means any track that has an Atmos version available will play back in Atmos. The second option is always on. And then we have the option to turn off Dolby Atmos, which means every track will only play back in stereo, even if there's an Atmos version available. I'm going to leave Dolby Atmos set to automatic. And one other detail, if we go under the general tab in the music settings, is that you can also, if you have an active Apple Music subscription, is download Dolby Atmos tracks to your device. And then we'll click OK. The last other detail is to go up to the taskbar right at the top and go to the sound settings. And under output is to select your device that you've chosen for Atmos playback that you've configured in the audio MIDI setup utility. In my case, this is the Sphere 16 in and out device but obviously this would be your audio interface that you're working with. And at this point, you should be able to listen to Atmos tracks from Apple Music, Apple TV, presumably other applications such as Netflix or Tidal, but I can't tell you for sure because I don't use those applications on my Mac hardware. I've only used Apple Music and TV. So playing back Atmos from those two applications are as far as I can go being sure that this works. Now, here's the thing. Does it actually work? Because you may have run into a situation, if you followed all these steps up until now, you might find that Apple Music only plays back in a 5.1 configuration for typical surround, not Atmos surround. And this happened to me too. And I wish that I could give you a hard and fast, like, this is how to fix it. But honestly, I bumped into the situation and, you know, I was frustrated with my Mac and I was like, come on, what the heck? And I started playing with the different output devices. So I went back to the sound and I just flipped between my Mac mini speakers and other devices. And then I tried restarting my Mac and quitting Apple Music. Something along the way fixed this. And ever since, I'm getting playback out of all channels. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now using the Dolby Labs functional testing, which is available on Apple Music. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to turn off Stage Manager. 
just so we can be sure to see two apps side by side. So I'm gonna close this up a bit. We'll close the audio MIDI setup window, excuse me. Let's close Safari and we'll minimize the Symphony Control app for right now. All right, cool. So let's open Sphere so we can see the channels on the output here. Let me see if I can squash this up a bit. Awesome. That's why I have the IK Multimedia MEMS microphone active and ready to go. So you can hear each of these test tones play through each individual speaker in my 7.0.4 setup. I'm gonna play track six from the Dolby Labs functional testing album on Apple Music. So you will hear a voice play through each channel and I've opened the Sphere application so you can also see the playback through each channel as well. And if we remind ourselves, I have the Sphere 16 device set as the input in the Sphere application. And I've set Alt-1 here to my Symphony IO Mark II. So that's where the signal is playing through. It's playing through Sphere's own virtual device and outputting to the Symphony IO Mark II. So you're gonna be able to hear these test tones as well as see them on each meter, play through. The only thing you won't hear is the LFE channel because again, I don't have a subwoofer in my studio at this moment. So let's give it a try right now. Here we go. Left. Right. Center. Left surround. Right surround. Left rear surround. Right rear surround. Left top front. Right top front. Left top rear. Right top rear. Left. And as you could see and hear, we had specific output playback for this multi-channel setup for Atmos from each individual speaker in sequence. And the only thing that was left out was the LFE channel, again, because I don't own a subwoofer. So if we go to my Atmos listening session tracks, and if we play that snarky puppy track once again, I'm gonna illustrate to you, I'm actually gonna play the audio from this MEMS microphone as I solo each individual speaker during playback. Let's give it a try right now. So there you go. I accidentally started with the center channel, which obviously had no audio at that moment. But I just went in sequence through the left, the right, the surrounds, the rears, the heights. And I've even grouped some of those individual outputs together so you could hear that. It's a little hashy. I suspect because I haven't downloaded this track. I've also learned very recently about clustering and how this works with Atmos. I'm not going to pretend like I'm the expert on it. But nonetheless, I have outputs out of every single channel and I'm not getting any sort of binaural roomy tone, as far as I can tell, that you hear when you listen with headphones, where you create a virtualized space because of the binaural rendering for Atmos for headphone playback. So this has worked for me. I'm going to assume it's going to work for you as well, as long as you have the appropriate Mac hardware and you're in a territory country region that can support these services from Apple. I do hope it works for you. All right, so that's the details on how to get playback going with Apple Music and Apple TV. And just to illustrate as well, let's open the TV app just so we can be dang sure that I'm talking and what I'm talking about is true. So I'll click on the big door prize because I just checked it out and we can see right down here, Atmos playback. So let's give it a try. Good morning. Hello. 
Hello. Nice score there, Broccoli boy. <laughs> that shirt, that's funny, and also makes me feel bad. Love you, Dad. You know what I got? So it seems to be working for me, right? I hope it works for you. In video number four, we're going to dig into actually getting into Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Talk soon.